World leaders wield immense power, overseeing vast populations, economies and national defence. Given these responsibilities, it's imperative for countries to provide their leaders with robust security measures. Among the many presidents, world leaders and heads of state who are heavily guarded, here are some notable examples. Starting with Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the 12th president of Turkey, known for his dynamic political career and ability to make powerful adversaries. Erdogan's security detail is extensive, consisting of a 60-man bodyguard team that accompanies him everywhere. During his travels, Erdogan is flanked by at least 100 snipers, vigilantly protecting him from any potential threats. On high-risk days, this number can swell to 3,000 sharpshooters. These highly trained personnel are adept at detecting even the slightest suspicious movement, prepared to neutralize any perceived threat to the president's safety. Erdogan's security convoy is equally formidable, often comprising up to 12 luxury vehicles filled with elite guards who spare no effort in ensuring his protection. Notably, Erdogan's security team has been involved in international incidents, such as altercations with protesters and clashes with border police, underscoring their unwavering dedication to safeguarding the president. Armed with sophisticated weaponry, including Turkish-made Yavuz 16 pistols and the MPT-76 National Infantry Rifle, Erdogan's security detail is equipped to handle significant threats. The MPT-76 boasts a range of 600 meters and can fire 600 rounds per minute, showcasing their capability to respond decisively to any security breach. In contrast, India, under Prime Minister Narendra Modi, allocates approximately $48 million annually to his security. Managed by the Special Protection Group, SPG, a specialized force dedicated to the proximate security of the Prime Minister and his family, Modi's security measures reflect India's commitment to ensuring the safety of its highest ranking leader. These leaders' substantial security investments highlight the critical importance placed on protecting heads of state in an increasingly complex global landscape. Modi's security detail is extensive, comprising over 3,000 highly trained personnel dedicated solely to safeguarding the Prime Minister. This team operates a fleet of vehicles that includes helicopters, drones, planes and motorbikes, ensuring swift mobility and comprehensive security coverage. Members of the Special Protection Group, SPG, tasked with Modi's security, are typically attired in black Western-style business suits paired with dark sunglasses and encrypted communication earpieces. For traditional events, they switch to safari suits to blend seamlessly into their surroundings. Equipped akin to Special Operations Commandos, SPG officers carry ultra-modern assault rifles, wear dark visor sunglasses with built-in communication gear, and are outfitted with gloves, bulletproof vests, elbow pads and knee pads. When Modi travels across the country, roads are often closed for hours to facilitate the passage of his sizeable convoy. The convoy includes specialized vehicles like the armored 2015 BMW 760 Lee, custom-made to ensure the Prime Minister's safety during transit. Accompanying vehicles in the motorcade consist of Mercedes Maybach S650 Guards, armored BMW 7 Series sedans, Range Rovers, BMW X5s, Toyota Fortuners, Land Cruisers, Mercedes-Benz Sprinters and ambulances. An electronic countermeasures car, such as the Tata Safari, is also part of the convoy to thwart guided and radio attacks. All vehicles transporting Modi and his team are certified with VR7 in the BRV 2009 Ballistics Protection Ratings, providing protection against threats ranging from landmine explosions to machine gun fire. These security measures underscore India's commitment to ensuring the safety and security of its Prime Minister, reflecting the challenges and responsibilities that come with leading one of the world's largest democracies. Modi's vehicles are fortified with additional security upgrades that go beyond standard protection measures. These include three-inch thick undercarriage armor, multi-layer laminated glass, and armor plating on critical areas such as doors, roof, body pillars, front footwell, rear bulkhead, and the roof. To enhance safety, these vehicles are equipped with run-flat tires capable of traveling even when deflated, advanced heat sensors to detect missiles and bombs, and Kevlar-sealed fuel tanks to prevent explosions. Inside, vehicles like Modi's Mercedes Maybach feature interiors transformed into gas-proof chambers with provisions for fresh oxygen in the event of chemical or biological attacks. Other advanced features reportedly include an intercom system for easy communication, 
an alarm system, a fire extinguisher with temperature sensors, irritant gas sensors to detect harmful gases, and compartments in the center console for carrying two machine guns. When traveling by air, Modi uses Air India 1, a custom Boeing 777-300ER aircraft reserved for the President, Vice President, or Prime Minister of India. These aircraft bear distinctive national markings and were constructed in the United States, modeled after Air Force One, the official transport for the US President. For domestic flights, Modi and his team can choose from four 14-seater Embraer 135 aircraft and three customized 46-seater Boeing Business Jet BBJ 737s equipped with VIP cabins. Modi has even used an Indian Air Force Lockheed C-130J during a visit to Sri Lanka, demonstrating his commitment to security, albeit in a military transport aircraft more suited for wartime than peacetime travel. Airborne security for Modi includes helicopter patrols, including six new Mi-17 V-5s approved by India's Defence Ministry, ensuring comprehensive aerial surveillance to preempt any threats. These measures underscore India's dedication to safeguarding its Prime Minister, utilising cutting-edge technology and robust security protocols to ensure Modi's safety in various environments, from roads to the skies. The Mi-17 V-5 helicopters boast advanced avionics, onboard navigation systems and night vision devices among their impressive features. To enhance safety, the SPG has outfitted these helicopters with armour plating and increased durability, ensuring robust protection for their passengers. If you're considering a career with the SPG, it's important to note that the organisation does not directly recruit personnel. Instead, recruits are selected from the enlisted ranks of the Central Armed Police Forces and Railway Protection Force. Candidates interested in joining the SPG must undergo rigorous physical and psychological assessments, as well as enhanced security screenings. Typically, deputation to the SPG lasts for five years, with the possibility of extension at the director's discretion. Since its establishment, the Special Protection Group has gained recognition for its readiness to confront any threat to their protectee. This dedication has earned SPG officers 43 President's Police Medals for Distinguished Service and 319 Police Medals for Meritorious Service. Currently, all the advanced technology, expertise and bravery of the SPG are exclusively reserved for Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who remains the sole SPG protectee. Moving on to Guinea, Mamadi Doumbouya assumed the interim presidency after a coup d'etat removed the former president, Alpha Conde, from power. Conde, who previously could have been listed here, saw his security forces unable to prevent his ousting. Interestingly, Mamadi Doumbouya rose through the ranks from corporal to head the special forces group, an elite unit personally groomed by Conde himself. Before his removal, Conde invested significantly in revitalizing Guinea's military capabilities. His efforts included a substantial budget of approximately $119 million in 2005, amounting to 2.9% of the country's GDP. Despite a reduced defense budget of about $30 million in 2006, Conde focused on restructuring the military returning soldiers to barracks, redeploying battalions and retiring around 4,000 personnel. He boosted budgets, escalated the militarization of his administration and tightened recruitment standards. The establishment of the Special Forces, an elite battalion directly financed by the Presidency, was a strategic move by Alpha Conde to bolster and professionalize Guinea's military capabilities. This initiative garnered support from international allies who believed the unit could effectively combat drug trafficking and terrorism. Ironically, these efforts unwittingly set the stage for Conde's own downfall. A former government insider revealed that Alpha Conde inadvertently created a formidable and well-equipped force. Led by Colonel Dambuya, this unit consisted of approximately 100 highly trained soldiers who had undergone rigorous special operations training abroad since 2010, including intensive exercises with American forces. Ultimately, it was this very unit that facilitated Mamadi Dumbuya's overthrow of Conde, propelling him into the presidency. 
To this day, these soldiers remain fiercely loyal to Dumbuya, entrusted with his protection against potential threats, particularly from remnants of the previous regime. Like much of Conde's military initiatives, Dumbuya's special forces are fully equipped with tactical armor, towed artillery, anti-tank weaponry, rocket launchers, air defense systems, and missiles. They excel in reconnaissance and have access to attack helicopters, making them adept at their protective duties. Currently, their primary responsibility is safeguarding interim president Mamadi Doumbouya, solidifying his status as one of the most heavily protected leaders in recent history. Moving on to Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, his position as a key figure in one of the world's largest oil exporting nations necessitates rigorous security measures for his personal safety. With an estimated net worth exceeding $13 billion, Mohammed bin Salman wields significant influence in the Arab world, making him a prominent target for various reasons, including his alleged involvement in the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Before assuming his current role, Mohammed bin Salman served as Saudi Arabia's Minister of Defense, where he implemented sweeping reforms within the country's armed forces, prioritizing his own security and protection amidst the evolving geopolitical landscape. With his dual roles as Crown Prince and Minister of Defense, Mohammed bin Salman consolidated control over all of Saudi Arabia's military and security agencies. Under the guise of enhancing capabilities, he strategically wrested control of these agencies from other royal family members and centralized them under a new entity known as the Presidency of State Security. This restructuring included sweeping reforms across various security agencies nationwide. Key changes involved replacing the Royal Guard Commander, appointing a new Chief of Staff for the Armed Forces and other high-ranking officials, all of whom now report directly to him. Effectively, Mohammed bin Salman merged the country's military might with the intelligence capabilities of the state's secret services, creating a formidable personal army dedicated to safeguarding his interests against any perceived threats. Continually fortifying his influence over Saudi Arabia's security apparatus, Mohammed bin Salman has assembled a robust security detail comprising highly trained soldiers and a vigilant cybersecurity team tasked with identifying potential risks to his safety. Since the initial consolidation, the Crown Prince's security contingent has expanded steadily. Just two years ago, reports surfaced of his initiative to recruit 800 new officers, underscoring ongoing efforts to strengthen his protective capabilities. Moreover, Mohammed bin Salman has significantly modernized the kingdom's military equipment, allocating substantial funds, over $20 billion in 2019 alone, to procure cutting-edge firearms and artillery, ensuring his security team possesses both the expertise and advanced weaponry necessary to fulfill their duties effectively. Given China's status as a global powerhouse, it is unsurprising that the nation spares no effort in safeguarding its president's well-being. The Central Security Bureau plays a pivotal role in this endeavor, overseeing the protection of China's top leadership. At its core is the Central Guard Unit, also known as the Central Guard Regiment, a highly trained bodyguard unit drawn from the ranks of the People's Liberation Army. While this group has historically protected all former Chinese leaders and their immediate families, Xi Jinping's security detail operates with unprecedented rigor and demands unparalleled dedication from its members. The Presidential Protection Unit comprises a brigade organized into three regiments, collectively consisting of over 8,000 personnel divided into seven groups, each further segmented into 36 squadrons. Each subgroup and individual within this structure is assigned distinct roles focused on ensuring the president's security. During Xi Jinping's visit to Hong Kong for its 25th anniversary of returning to Chinese sovereignty on June 30th last year, an unprecedented security operation was enacted. This included strategically placed machine gun positions throughout the city, deployment of ballistic briefcases, and a meticulously orchestrated extensive motorcade. Throughout the event, Xi Jinping was escorted by elite officers from a VIP protection unit, formerly designated as G4, in addition to his personal bodyguards from the Central Security Bureau, all equipped with advanced armaments. 
Notably, some security personnel carried lightweight ballistic briefcases capable of converting into bulletproof shields or blankets within seconds. Others were reportedly armed with machine guns concealed within briefcases, ensuring swift and potent response capabilities if confronted with imminent threats. The President's transportation involved a lengthy motorcade comprising approximately 50 police vehicles, accompanying him at all times when on the move. Xi Jinping himself travelled in a fortified bulletproof Hongqi sedan, a luxurious Chinese vehicle historically favoured by leaders of the ruling Communist Party since Mao Zedong's era. To enhance aerial protection, a government helicopter maintained a vigilant watch, ready to counter airborne threats. Stringent security measures included the complete blockage of traffic lights along the motorcade route, ensuring uninterrupted movement and minimising vulnerability to potential attackers. Such extensive precautions illustrate the thoroughness with which the President of China's safety is assured, affording him an environment free from apprehension and threats. Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader of North Korea, has maintained an unwavering grip on power since assuming leadership of the country. His authoritarian rule has naturally attracted opposition, given the lack of democratic governance under his regime. However, Kim Jong-un's extensive security measures make any challenge to his authority exceedingly difficult. Accompanied by a security detail resembling a specialized military unit, Kim Jong-un is safeguarded wherever he travels within North Korea. His presidential motorcade is flanked by sharply dressed bodyguards, some of whom are required to maintain physical fitness levels that enable them to jog alongside his vehicle during movements. These elite bodyguards are part of the Central Party Office No. 6, an exclusive unit renowned for its stringent entry requirements. Prospective members of this elite team must meet rigorous criteria, including height specifications matching that of Kim Jong-un himself. This requirement, while unconventional, is among many tests candidates must pass, which also assess skills such as marksmanship and martial arts. These assessments ensure that those selected can protect the leader effectively in any circumstance, akin to the rigorous evaluations undergone by secret service agents. Furthermore, candidates undergo thorough background checks spanning multiple generations of their families to prevent potential vulnerabilities or conflicts of interest that could compromise their loyalty. Beyond personal bodyguards, Kim Jong-un is shielded by an entire unit of the North Korean army dedicated solely to his protection. This unit, part of North Korea's presidential security system, comprises over 100,000 personnel, a formidable force singularly focused on ensuring the safety and security of the supreme leader. This robust security apparatus underscores the comprehensive measures in place to safeguard Kim Jong-un, highlighting the unparalleled scale and complexity of North Korea's efforts to protect its supreme authority. Officially designated as the Supreme Guard Command, this unit operates under the oversight of General Yun Jong-rin from its headquarters in Pyongyang, strategically positioned near Kim Jong-un's main residence. Additionally, the command maintains multiple camps across North Korea to ensure comprehensive coverage. Apart from its core members, the Supreme Guard Command has access to an additional 100,000 soldiers who remain on standby in case of a serious threat to Kim Jong-un. These reserve forces are trained to swiftly relocate the leader to secure locations and deploy armoured vehicles as needed to bolster his safety. Key members within the elite security echelon of the command possess access to classified intelligence critical for ensuring Kim Jong-un's protection. This includes knowledge of concealed bunkers strategically built to shield the leader from any potential attacks. Despite the extensive manpower dedicated to his security, the scale of resources, such as mobilizing 100,000 personnel, might seem excessive. However, recruits for this duty are typically selected during their teenage years and undergo rigorous training regimes focused solely on safeguarding Kim Jong-un. Donald Trump, former president of the United States. Donald Trump's inclusion in this list was virtually inevitable, given his role as the head of one of the world's most influential nations and his status as a billionaire with extensive global business interests. During his presidency, Trump's unwavering commitment to security set records in terms of expenditure. Under Trump's administration, annual security costs soared to unprecedented levels.
while the protection of former President Barack Obama and his family amounted to approximately $16 million annually, Trump's security expenses skyrocketed to a staggering $29 million per year. The pinnacle of this expenditure was reached in 2017 when the US Congress allocated an astonishing $120 million specifically for Donald Trump's security and that of his family. This astronomical sum reflected the immense logistical and operational requirements of safeguarding a sitting president. The elite secret service responsible for Trump's protection comprised over 7,000 personnel across various specialized units meticulously coordinated to respond to any potential threats to the president's life. The considerable costs associated with maintaining such a formidable security apparatus were substantial. A significant portion of these funds was allocated towards the Beast, the widely renowned and heavily fortified presidential limousine. This vehicle is equipped with 5-inch thick armor plating, multiple layers of bulletproof glass and 8-inch thick doors that create a vacuum seal around the interior. Additionally, its specialized wheel rims enable continued operation even if the tires are punctured. The Beast's fuel tank is meticulously insulated to prevent explosions or leaks, while its interior features an independent oxygen supply in case of chemical emergencies. Nestled in the trunk of this formidable vehicle are firefighting systems, tear gas dispensers, smoke screens, a comprehensive medical kit, and reserves of the President's blood type for potential transfusions. Despite these sophisticated precautions, Trump's security is further reinforced by a dedicated secure communication line that links the entire motorcade, which invariably comprises more than 30 vehicles during each outing, ensuring a substantial and imposing procession. Leading the convoy are local police cars or motorcycles tasked with clearing the route and ensuring a secure passage ahead of the presidential vehicle. Immediately following are pilot vehicles positioned directly in front of the president's car, serving as a protective buffer between the outside world and the president's secure enclave. Directly behind the pilot vehicles are the lead cars, typically consisting of the authentic Beast and its replicas. While there are usually two lead cars, named the original Beast and a replica, the number can vary depending on the president's needs. Trump introduced the practice of deploying multiple replicas of the Beast to both confuse potential assailants and accommodate additional VIPs. Following the lead cars is a halfback vehicle carrying the president's security detail, including the counter-assault team tasked with swiftly responding to any ambushes targeting the motorcade. Behind them rides the watchtower van equipped with antennae to neutralize electronic threats, alongside an ID vehicle responsible for threat identification and coordination with other convoy members, particularly the lead and pilot vehicles. Adjacent to the ID vehicle is the hazard mitigation unit, resembling a black ambulance, equipped to handle biological hazards and ensuring a secure communication network within the motorcade and with external entities. At the rear of the convoy is an ambulance primed to respond to any medical emergencies, prioritizing the President's health and safety. Lastly, the rear guard vehicle secures the rear of the motorcade, ensuring comprehensive protection throughout the entirety of the presidential journey. The entire entourage accompanies the President wherever he travels, whether for a casual lunch outing or an international trip. Alongside the vehicles within his entourage, a multitude of specialized vehicles and aircraft are dedicated exclusively to Trump's security, such as Air Force One, escorted by two F-35 combat jets, Marine One and Ground Force One. Additional units involved in safeguarding the US president include K-9 units, emergency response teams, sharpshooters, motorized units, and special operations teams, all tasked with executing orders crucial for the president's safety. Vladimir Putin, President of Russia. Russia may be one of the most powerful and controversial countries globally, particularly amidst ongoing geopolitical tensions such as the Ukraine crisis. Given this backdrop, Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, stands as a prominent and highly targeted figure. As a former KGB agent who has held power since 2000, Putin is deeply committed to his personal security and well-being, taking extensive measures to safeguard both. President Putin remains vigilant against potential threats, a precaution underscored by instances such as a US senator publicly urging action against him. 
highlighting real security concerns rather than mere paranoia. Considering his stature and consequential actions, it's unsurprising that Putin's security detail ranks among the world's most elite. Spearheading his protection are the Musketeers, an exclusive unit within Russia's Federal Protective Service, FSO. Information about this select group is scarce, primarily sourced from platforms like Beyond Russia, revealing stringent criteria for selection based on operational psychology, physical endurance, and the ability to endure extreme climatic conditions without faltering under pressure. Unarmed but highly trained, the Musketeers are formidable individuals equipped with Russian-made 9mm SR-1 vector pistols loaded with armor-piercing ammunition. Additionally, they carry specialized briefcases that double as shields to defend their charge from close-range attacks. Prior to any travel by Russia's top official, advanced teams are deployed months in advance to survey and secure his destinations. These teams meticulously plan the safest routes and conduct thorough inspections of his accommodations. Jamming devices are strategically installed to thwart remote bomb detonations, while technicians under Putin's employ continuously monitor all electronic devices in the vicinity. When President Putin travels, he is accompanied by a formidable convoy of heavily armored vans. Some of these vehicles transport military special operators armed with anti-tank grenade launchers, portable anti-aircraft missiles and other advanced weaponry. Putin's security protocols extend to public appearances where snipers maintain vigilant positions around the perimeter, prepared to neutralize any potential threats swiftly. The Federal Protective Service, FSO, wields extensive authority, enabling them to conduct surveillance, intercept communications, search premises, confiscate vehicles, detain suspects and interrogate individuals, all in the name of safeguarding the president. Upon reaching the age of 35, musketeers are typically reassigned to high-ranking positions such as regional governors, federal ministers, commanders in special services or presidential administrators as a reward for their service. To mitigate any life-threatening risks, Putin's security team is prepared to deploy a body double to distract potential assailants. Furthermore, every meal served to the president undergoes rigorous scrutiny by a designated taster to prevent poisoning. An established practice corroborated by the Club des Chefs des Chefs, an organization of chefs who serve heads of state and monarchs. Given the successful protection of Putin thus far, it is evident that his security detail meticulously implements comprehensive measures to ensure his safety in all circumstances.